We're looking at Steve's 1972 Chevy Blazer. It was built about 15 years ago, and the rubber's starting to get old and tired, so we're going to go ahead and replace all this stuff. I'm going to show you some new rubber that goes on and give you some helpful handy hints along the way. So, you stay tuned, yeah? First thing I'm going to need to do is unbolt my top right here. Now, you'll generally find five bolts that are along the side right here, whether it's a single wall or a double wall side, it'll still have five. There will be one more at the very end that you're going to be able to see that looks somewhat like this right here. So you'll notice this and this. There's one hiding on you right here. And sometimes over the years, somebody might have stuck an extra one here or there. So be careful when you take them all out. And then when you're lifting it up, you want to do it pretty nice and even. Um, because what will happen a lot of times is that the top is going to just get kind of cemented down. Sometimes it will pull your paint off and things. So you have to be careful when you're doing it. Kind of pry it off to make sure that you don't do any additional damage uh, to the front or anywhere down the line. So I'm going to get all my bolts out of here and I'm going to just get this up and move it back a little bit and then I'll show you what comes next. All right, so we're actually got pretty lucky on this. The rubber that's up in here is still good, and the rubber right here is still good. The door rubber, though, is pretty old and tired. You'll have three screw holes on the top right here, but typically you'll only find two screws in there, and that is because when you pull this back, you'll see that this and this have a cage nut or a nut welded on there, and this one does not. Now, I suppose you could easily put a uh, J nut or a slip nut on there and get all three on but uh, it's holding well with two so we're going to go ahead and work with that. You can just pull this down and I want you to notice this. This is the old style right here and I just absolutely hate these. They just make a bloody mess and they don't stick for nothing. They come off really easy. You'll see all this goopy stuff that's left over. That's really common. So we'll have to clean all of this up and then I'll show you why I like the new one so much better. Now here is why I love this rubber over the other one so much. Right in here, the part that actually clamps onto the edge, it has a metal sleeve in there. So you see how it's open there? I can just crush that and it'll stay like that. Another thing that you want to check when you're looking for quality rubber is that you'll notice that this round piece right here, it's hollow. On some of the cheaper ones, they'll be solid or it'll be a really thick rubber. And then what happens is you can't shut your door well. This has to be nice and pliable so you can shut your door easy. So what happens is, is this just simply fits on like this. You don't have to do any glue or anything. But we're going to start at the other end first. So we've got our three holes here. We're just using the two. And uh, I'll put my screws in and I'll get this screwed on the top first and then I'll be able to carry this all the way down and I'll be sure it's in the right spot. If I was to start on the other end, by the time I got over here, the chances of it being in the right spot are pretty much nil. Okay, so what I like to do is kind of get this started with my hand first and get it lined up and then I'll get a rubber mallet. Now you can hit this with your hand. By the, by the time you do all your doors, your hands will just be jello. So you have to um, get this on nice and tight and I'm just going real slow. I want to make sure that this isn't cocked to one side or the other. I don't want to bend this metal up. Now when I'm doing this, when I get the corners, it's real important to have the corner in very snugly. So what happens in on corners a lot of times is you'll do it too tight and then it'll pull away from the corners here or down on the bottom. So when we're doing these we're really jamming it into the corner and making sure it's totally in there first. So that's solid. Now I can keep going. 
Now, if you've installed the rubber correctly and you've got your corners nice and tight, when you get to right here, this is about where you should be, just barely above the edge here. Inside the bag that comes with this, there's a little bag like this, and it's got a little black round plug, and that is going to go right in this hole right here. So this is all done when we put it back on. That'll smash that down the rest of the way and take care of that. Uh, while we're in here doing these kinds of things, do a yourself a favor and double check all your peripherals. This is obviously pretty old and tired, so we just got a new one to put on. When you're putting these on, it's really common that you can't find the hole that the screw went in. So you get yourself a pokey thing, some people call this an awl, and uh, just go ahead and fish around until you find the hole, and then it's going to make it a lot easier to get your screws lined up. If you still can't find it, um, and you have a pickup, you can climb up underneath the truck and poke up from the bottom. Now you can't do that on the blazers because there is a um, boxing plate down here to firm up the whole front end because you don't have a roof going to secure all this. So I'll get this guy on and then uh, I'll show you something else. Okay, so like I said, we got lucky. We didn't have to do several pieces of rubber. This right here is the piece that goes right up in here. You've got a piece that goes right here. Um, you'll have these little caps that you can get. And these guys go right up here. But all of these are good. Now this right here is a little deflector that's gonna go right up here. We'll have to get our roof back on, and then I'll show you how that goes. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the roof on right where we need it, and then we're just going to get all of our bolts started. After you get that, then you snug them all up, you snug them all up, and when you're tightening it down, it'll bring the roof down, and then you can get these right here. Usually it's best to loosen up these two right here, then go ahead and get this guy started, then snug them all up, and then tighten them all up. You don't want to just get a bolt and tighten it and torque it because it might uh, warp things. After you get your top all nice and secure, we're going to put this last piece on here, and this is going to go right here. Now it's going to tuck under this little rubber spot and it has a screw hole here, and then you'll notice two screw holes here. And what this does is just keeps the rainwater from working its way on in here. So you can see that doing the rubber yourself is no big deal. You can take care of it. Maybe a buddy helps you move the roof. You'll be done in a couple of hours. My name is David Welch. I'm at Brothers Tech Center every single week making sure your truck gets on the road. You check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to the YouTube channel because next week I'm going to do another video and if you don't watch it, you're going to feel bad and you don't want that to happen.